When we talk about joints, we cannot avoid discussing this notion of what is called as a primary key. Okay, so let's take a look at the supplier's table. So in the supplier's table, there's a column called supplier number, and the supplier numbers are S1, S2, S3, S4, S5. And the idea is that the supplier number does not repeat in the supplier's table. That is, each supplier has his or her own supplier number and no two suppliers have the same supplier number. Okay, so in that sense, the column SNO use you is unique in the supplier's table. Okay, this is like, for example, the, with the IRS, they have our social security number, right? No two individuals are supposed to have the same social security number. So in that sense, our social security number uniquely identifies the individual. In a similar sense, the supplier number uniquely identifies a supplier. Or in the context of uh, our university, right? we have an ID that uniquely identifies each student of the university. No two students will ever have the same ID, unless, of course, somebody makes a mistake. Those kinds of mistakes also happen, but that's not intended. Okay? So this kind of a column is called as a primary key. Okay, so the value of the primary key for a particular column in a table uniquely identifies a row of the table. Okay, of course it's not necessary that every table have something that uniquely identifies a row, but it's a good idea to have such a column within a table. Okay, so again same thing applies to parts, right? The part number uniquely identifies a part. So if you say part number uh, uh, P4, then it, we know that we are talking about the part whose name is screw. Okay, uh, Okay, it's a blue screw and a red screw. So there are P3 and P4, both of them identify screws, but they're two different parts. Okay, so whatever. Uh, a value of the part number uniquely identifies a particular row of the parts table. Okay, so that's the idea of a primary key. Okay, so primary key is a column or collection of columns that uniquely identifies a row in the table. The column value is unique within the table. Okay, or of course when we say collection of columns, the collection of column values would be unique within the table. Okay, so dplyr actually does not understand the notion of a primary key. Right, so dplyr is not actually concerned with something being a primary key or not, but it's a good idea for us to identify the notion of a primary key and apply it because it has a lot of practical applications when we are dealing with data as we will shortly see. Okay, so it is something that we should keep track of and something that we should be aware of, but dplyr itself doesn't understand primary keys. Okay, so suppliers, parts, supplier number is a primary key for supplier, parts is a pr primary key for parts, uh, project number, JNO, is the primary key for projects. What about shipments? What in the shipments table uniquely identifies a shipment? I cannot say the supplier number identifies a shipment because if I say supplier number S1, there are many shipments that are made by this particular supplier, right? So the supplier number S1 does not uniquely identify a shipment, okay? Now, does part number uniquely identifies a shipment? No, because the same part may be part of many shipments. You know, for example, shipment 1 has part P1, uh, and some other shipment could also have part P1. Okay, now such a row may or may not be present in our table, but it is possible, right? Because again, there are so many suppliers, parts, and projects that not all the unique combinations are shown here. Okay, uh, so again, but how about the combinations of supplier number and part number? Well, the same supplier might supply the same part many times, right, on different dates. Okay, so once again, supplier number, part number is not uh, a primary key for this table. The combination of supplier number, part number, and project number, you could say, could be a uh, primary key, that is, that might uniquely identify a row, but then once again, the same supplier may supply the same part to the same project many times. In other words, supplier, uh, you know, Philip, supplies the part CAM 
to the project, whatever project we can think of, like for example, sorter, and supplied it once on the 1st of January and again the 1st of March. Different quantities or maybe even the same quantity, right? Now, if we assume that the same supplier is not going to make the shipment on the same day a couple of times, then we could say that the combination of the first, all the four columns is what uniquely identifies a shipment. Okay, so the, here I just wanted to give you an example of a table in which the primary key is not a single column but a combination of columns. We'll see examples of this as we go forward as well. Okay, so if you look at this, these are all uh, the, the connections between the shipments table, supplier shipments and parts, shipments and projects. So if you join shipments and suppliers, you will join on the supplier number. If you join shipments and parts, you will join on the part number. And if you join shipments and projects, you will, sh you will join on JNO, the project number. Okay, now in this example, the column names are exactly the same in both the tables. For example, in shipments, it's called SNO. In suppliers also, it's called SNO. Now, that's not a must. Okay, uh, If they have the same name, then we have the advantage that we don't have to mention it while joining. If they don't have the same name, then we can mention it. Okay, So, don't always expect that they will have actually the same name. Let's look at another example. This time, we want to produce a report of shipments with the supplier names and part names appended to each shipment. Now remember the supply the shipment state table only has the supplier number and part number but we want the supplier names and part names and of course they have to come from the respective tables supplier and parts. Okay so this time we have three tables that we have to join. Okay so this is from how shipments are joined with suppliers from the previous example, right? So we've got the uh, shipments and we've got the suppliers and we have matched up every shipment with its corresponding supplier and we know how to do this. We can say shipments inner join suppliers and the magic happens, okay? But this time we also want the supplier part name added. Supplier name is done. So all we have to do is for every shipment get the part number and append the appropriate details from the parts table, right? So the first row was part P1, so therefore P1. The second row was also part uh, P1 and therefore P1. The third row is P3, therefore we have added P3 and so on. So just like how we added the supplier's uh, details, we are adding the part details. So in this case, we've joined three tables, suppliers, uh, shipments, suppliers, parts. Okay, and this is the result of adding, uh, joining all the three tables together, right? So typically when you join, you can imagine mentally, that's not really how it actually happens, but mentally, conceptually, you can think that we are first creating this big table with all of these join things performed, and then we are operating from that big table. So think of it like that. Okay, so produce a report of part numbers, dates, and quantities for shipments made by supplier Jones. Okay, so we want the part numbers, which is there, dates, quantities, all of those are there within the shipments table itself. But we want the details only for shipments made by a particular supplier whose name is Jones. And of course, the name is only in the uh, suppliers table, so we do have to join. Okay, so if you just say shipments, inner join suppliers, this is what you get. Okay, so think of it like this. So we, we get this and from this we can filter for shipments made by supplier Jones. And then of course we want only certain columns, right? We want only the part numbers, dates and quantities. Okay, so we can do all of that now. So we can say shipments, inner join suppliers, right? Then we are going to filter for supplier name is Jones, right? And then we are only going to select the required columns, part number, quantity, and ship date, okay? So notice that we are using all our earlier understanding of dplyr to get exactly what we want, okay? So this is how uh, the whole process goes on, okay? Again, we are saying inner join, 
Uh, later on, we'll see why exactly we are saying inner join. So till now, the only kind of join we know is inner join. And we know how that works, right? We take the matching values from the two tables and just append the details. Let us now look at a slightly more complicated thing. So here we are saying produce a report of the supplier names with the associated number of shipments for each supplier. In other words, we want to say Smith, 20 shipments, Jones, five shipments, etc. Okay, so it's a summary report. Uh, so again, this is like, you know, when we use dplyr, group by, summarize, that kind of stuff. That's exactly what we're doing. So first, we, of course, have to join shipments with suppliers because we want the supplier name and therefore that has to come from suppliers, right? So we've inner joined with suppliers. Now we can easily say group by S name, summarize number of shipments is N. Okay, but of course we already know that whenever you're doing group by and summarize and taking a count, you can just say count. Suppliers inner join ship, uh, shipments inner join suppliers count S name. Okay, so both of these will give us exactly the same result, namely this. So we know that Clark made two shipments, Jones made seven shipments, Smith made two shipments for a total of 11 shipments that we have. Okay, so again, we are able to do the join and then apply our earlier tricks like grouping by and summarizing and all of those tricks, right? So what we are now doing is bringing together more and more of our dplyr knowledge. And of course, you know, the classic case is when we do all of this and finally send it off to a ggplot for further processing. Again, we will, let's take another example. Produce a report of shipments with the supplier names and part names appended to each shipment, okay? So clearly, we have to append the uh, we have to use the shipments table, supplier table, parts table, right? Because supplier name is going to come from supplier, part name is going to come from part, okay? So first, let's look at an incorrect approach to do this, right? So we are saying shipments, inner join suppliers, inner join parts, okay? And then select uh, supplier number, part number, project number, ship date, quantity, etc., etc. Okay, we are getting... Uh, because we don't want all the details. We want only all the details of shipments with only the supplier name and part name, right? So supplier name and part name alone. If we just did this join alone and did not do a select, then we'll get all the columns from all of the three tables, which we don't want, okay? So you get the result, which looks like this, but notice what has happened here, right? It The first join, sh shipments, inner join suppliers, it said, it joined by the supplier number, okay? So th that was fine because that's the only column that was common to shipments and suppliers and therefore it automatically joined by the supplier number, which was correct. But the moment you have shipments joined by suppliers, you now have a table with all the columns from shipments and all the columns from suppliers. Now suppliers happens to have a column called city, so, right? So this inner joined uh, shipment suppliers table now has columns called supplier number, part number, project number, ship date, quantity, and then supplier number, supplier name, uh, status, and city, right? So there is a column called city in the suppliers table, and that has come in when we did this join, okay? Now, subsequently, when you go and join with parts, what is happening is that this join table has a has a column called part number. It also has a column called city. And parts has a column called parts number. It has a part column called city. And that is why, notice the second join is happening by part number and city. Because those two columns are common to the result of the first join and parts. Okay? Now clearly, you don't want the second join to include the city column. We only want it to happen by the part number, not by the city, right? So to do that, we'll have to inhibit this, right? So the first join is hap the first inner join is happening by supply number. The second join is happening by both part number and city. Of course, joining by city is meaningless in this particular context. Okay, so we want to deal with it differently. Okay, so this is wrong because this join is not what we want. Right? So what we want to do is sub, sub shipments, inner join suppliers, and then we leave out the city column. 
right? Because we don't want it to be a part of the next join. So we say select minus city and then join with parts and then we select whatever columns we want. And that gives us uh, the result that we like. Okay, so obviously we now have all the 11 rows. Earlier we got only five rows because of that city stuff which was uh, messing up stuff. Okay. So you have all of these things that you need to think about very carefully when you're doing joins. The nice thing is when you're doing joins, okay, and if you don't supply, uh, if you don't indicate the columns by which you're joining, which I have not shown you yet how to do, then uh, the join functions will tell you what columns it is joining by. Notice that this time it is now joining by supplier number and only joining by part number. City is not involved. Okay, so notice that the join is happening only by supply number and part number, city is not involved. And as I've said earlier, by default, joins will occur by only the matching columns, by column names. Okay, we will see later how to control this and explicitly specify what to join by.